First of all, I wanted to give you an overview of what it is we're trying to achieve here. So forgive me for the diagram, but I had to roughly sketch it out. And what I'm going to illustrate very quickly here is that I have a common problem that you might have experienced before regarding DNS and some Linux installations. So what I've got is I've got my virtual machine, I've got my DNS server for my local dot lab, and I've got a Linux box. So what you can see here is my DNS server for my lab.local is sitting on a machine that is 172.16.1.10. That's acting as the DNS server for also all of the virtual machines within my virtual box environment. So you can just quickly see, I mean, the machine's happily running here. I'll just make a point of proving that it is in fact that IP. And as you can see, that matches up. Now, the problem is not that that happens, but more what doesn't happen. So here we have a Linux machine. Uh, we can just very quickly go and have a look at the configuration information. And you'll see the primary DNS is also our Windows machine. And we have got an IP address. So all looks good so far, right? So let's do some testing. If I was to do a ping of something simple like my favorite search engine, you can see we get a reply. So that's nice and simple. So let's do something else. Let's do my uh, AD controller on the lab environment. Now what you're going to see here is the typical behavior that I'm going to demonstrate. So it tells me I can't find it. And I'm like, okay, so maybe it doesn't know where to find it. So we do a quick NS lookup for our windc.lab.local, right? And we can see it does know where to find it, but it doesn't find it at the same time. Now. This is the kind of behavior you might experience. There's a very simple one for this. We go into the nsswitch.conf file. We look for a line called hosts. Now, one of the problem with the line, and this is for whatever reason, it's just a, a very simple one, is that DNS is at the end of it. So if I take DNS off the end and I put it somewhere closer to the front, like, oh, say, second entry, save and exit, and then I go and say, you know what, I'm going to try and ping you again. Whee! It's all operational once more. And it's not just for the host names. I should be able now to ping the domain as well. And as you can see, tada, I get a response. So hopefully you can see the issue and very quickly how to resolve it, making one line configuration change. This is my tech video for today and thank you for watching.